The caption for this morning meditation is, Let there be light. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. The better meaning, the earth became. The earth became without form. The earth became void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. As it is recorded in the Bible, the first miracle work God performed was to bring light out of darkness. The first spoken word of God recorded in the Bible, let there be light. Let there be light. That's the first word God spoke as it is recorded in the Bible. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. The word darkness appears in the whole Bible about 162 times. 162 times in the King James Version. In that 162 times, to understand what does the word darkness mean, the word darkness appears in the book of Job alone 28 times. 28 times. In all the other books, two times, one time, six times, 17 times in Psalms. But in the book of Job alone, 28 times. So in the book of Job we can understand what darkness is. Puzzled. He couldn't understand many things. So he explains that as darkness. And in the Bible, Luke chapter 22, verse 53, Colossians 1.13, Luke chapter 22, verse 53, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, we read about the power of darkness. Darkness has got power. There's power in darkness. And in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 21, chapter 10, verse 21, Darkness itself is one of the plagues. One of the plagues. Darkness is a plague. And God wanted to send a plague on Egyptians. We read Exodus chapter 10 verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. The whole land Darkness, the whole land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt, darkness which can be touched, that type of a thick darkness, it is upon the land, upon the entire land. I tell you one truth, darkness can be upon a person, darkness can be upon a whole family, darkness can be upon a group, Darkness can be upon a society. The very nation can be under darkness. So here the, law, the whole land of Egypt was in darkness. It was a plague. It was a punishment. God permitted the plague on Egypt. Darkness has got a power. The Bible, Jesus told us about the power of darkness. This is the power of darkness. My dear brother, my dear sister. But when we think about the work of Jesus, it is to bring light. The work of God, it is to bring light in darkness. It was a very new thought. What darkness can do in our life? What darkness can do in our life? I just give you seven instances from the Bible. What darkness can do in our life? Genesis chapter 15 verse 12. 
Genesis chapter 15 verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, an aurora of great darkness fell upon him. An aurora, a terror of great darkness fell upon him. The story behind this instance is very, very important. See, Lot left Abraham. He put his tent on the outskirts of Sodom, slowly moved into Sodom, built a house for him, etc. That time, an allied force came to fight against Sodom and Gomorrah. An allied force. Five great nations. Babylon, Persia, today we can say Iraq, Iran, and five other, three more countries. They came to fight against so kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Sodom and Gomorrah, they were able to have two more kingdoms, an alliance with them. So five kings fighting against four kings. In other words, it's a great battle where nine kingdoms are involved. Almost a global war. Almost a global war. Nine kingdoms involved. You must know the intensity of that war. About nine kingdoms involved in that war. So these four allied forces were unable to fight against that five allied forces. They are very powerful. Babylon and uh, Elam, Persia, they are very powerful and three more kings supporting them. So finally this Sodom and Gomorrah, this force was defeated and the people in Sodom and Gomorrah were taken into captivity. When they were taken into captivity, Lot and his family were also taken into captivity. This news was brought to Abraham. He was on the wilderness of uh, somewhere around Bethel in that wilderness. When this news was brought to him, I don't know how he got this boldness. Already Lot has left him. But somehow that something he wanted to do seemed to be very irrational, seemed to be very foolish. Is not God told him or just he took 318 people. They are servants, they are not militants. Just 318 people. With 318 people he went to fight against those five kings. His 318 people. He went to fight against the five kings. They are not trained militants, they are servants in his house. And somehow you are able to defeat those people and it was a cunning way he was fighting against them in the night. In those days the rule for battle was only in the daytime. Sunrise to sunset. But what Abraham did was right or wrong, I don't want to get into that. But in the night watch he fell upon them and they were not ready to fight. Just like. Some who were able to deliver the people, especially, it was the self-interest, Lot and his family, his own nephew. So he delivered Lot and his family and also he was able to rob those kings, all the five kings. In those days, robbing means that's the legal. They take all the jewels, everything, what the enemy will have, they'll take it. That robbing was not wrong in those days. That's why we see Jesus be like, equal to God, he didn't take it as a robbery. The robbery was a privilege in those days. It is their privilege. So he robbed all those kings and all came. That ends the 14th chapter. So Melchizedek blessed him and all. Now, it's not chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16. It was just one story. After that, a fear fell on Abraham. Now what will happen? 
he is already a type of a uh, running away jack. A nadodi. Not a wood, nadu water on the nadodi. He was a nadodi. A sojourner. He doesn't have a kingdom or anything. Living in tents, not in a fortified cities. No child for him. If he is killed, what will happen to his wife? What will happen? There is nobody for him. Very boldly he has done it. So naturally a fear fell on him. This is the background. The enemies, if he has killed a few people, doesn't mean that he totally annihilated Babylon, annihilated Persia, no, nothing like that. The kings were killed in the night, he fell on them when they were not aware of it. Delivered lot and came running. Now what will happen? When that fear fell on him, that's how this chapter 15 begins. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield. Now there's a battle. Now he has killed them, now he needs protection. This is the background in which the Lord says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Here it is the exceeding great protection. Fear not. I am thy shield, I am thy great exceeding reward. And from verse 7 to 12, And the Lord said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of Chaldei. From Chaldei I brought thee out to give thee the land to inherit it. And he said, Abraham said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it. How do I know that I will inherit it? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Take me an ephah of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And Abraham took unto him all this, and divided them in the midst and laid each piece, one against the other, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drew them away. And when the sun was going down, he felt that God said, do this, do this, do this. He has done everything and nothing has happened. Probably the whole day he was waiting. God said, take this three, take this three, take this three, take this. And he has made a sacrifice, waiting and waiting and waiting. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. So when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. Natural, throughout the day he was waiting, there's already fear, and the previous night he didn't sleep. He went and fought. I mean, you must be able to see the whole thing in a secret, not just taking a promise. The Lord said, I am with thee, I am thy shield, I am thy great, exceeding great reward. Don't stop that. Throughout the night he had a battle. And that vexation, throughout the day he was waiting, nothing was happening. So a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, an error of great darkness fell upon him. A great darkness, an error, terror, is an error movie, an error movie, scared. What happened next? Dear brother, sister, is anybody going through that passage? 
a type of a fear. You've done something, but what is next? A fear if somebody is coming to catch around. Fear of police, fear of arrest. What is going to happen? Literally one man was telling me, he didn't want to sleep with his wife. I was talking with him. He told me, now I'm not telling you a story. I'm scared. In the night, there's nothing she could do for me. In the night, there's nothing she could do for me. Horror. Many years back, one gentleman who was in the highest post in the government, that's the time that I came for the ministry. That's the time that I came for the ministry. One day Pastor Sundaram gave me a letter. That letter was addressed like this. The preacher of the evening service dated such and such. A Pentecostal church near Hotel Garden. That's all the address. On that particular evening I was the preacher. So Pastor Sundaram gave me that letter. It was, it was an inland letter. When I opened the letter, it was from one of the highest government officials. We have to stand in a queue for his appointment. He has written. I listened to your preaching. I want to meet you. Can you give me an appointment? I was shocked. A man of that order asking me. I was very young at that time. I was must be 33 or 34. He was asking an appointment with me. So to that address I sent a letter back. Exactly on the dot he came. He said he has got two children. Both are highly educated, both are married. And he has got houses for both of them. Both are settled. And he has got a house for his wife and a good bank balance for her. So he decided to kill his life. There's no more, there's no reason I should live. Why should I live? And he was scared. He told me exactly the way that I have tortured my wife. If anything happens to me, maybe type of a stroke, a paralytic, a cerebral paralysis. If anything happens to me, certainly she will take it back from me. That's how I have tortured her. The darkness of terror. And the second one, Exodus 14.20. Exodus 14.20. And it became between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, to the Egyptians. But it gave light by night to these, to these lights, so that the one came not near the other. The Egyptians came not near these lights all the night. All the night. It was night. Again, the story behind this, you must know to understand this. Israelites were coming out of Egypt, that was by night. They are coming by the sea, uh, uh, Red Sea. Initially, the Egyptians gave permission for the Israelites to go. Now, when all these Israelites go, almost Egypt would become standstill. Even to our house, if the housemaid doesn't come for one day in some houses, that's all, the whole thing will collapse. If the servant maid doesn't come, or the cook comes, servant maid, the whole family is depending on them. 
There can be no breakfast, there can be no washing the vessels, there can be no washing the clothes, there can be no cleaning the floor. Just imagine, the government is more scared of the strike of than any government officials, uh, bankers, uh, railway employees, they are not scared. Even if they go for hunger strike, let them have hunger strike. When the bus drivers or lorry drivers, to some extent. But when the sanitary workers go on a hunger strike, on a strike, the government will be in jitters. The whole thing would become standstill. Now just imagine all of a sudden all slaves, all labor force is removed. All labor force is suddenly removed. How can they function? Out of some plagues, the king said, okay, you go. Now suddenly 30 lakhs of laborers are withdrawn. Just imagine the situation. So the Egyptians said, okay, now we'll bring them back. So their king, the king himself was leading the uh, troops. Because the situation was very great. And when they were coming nearer, it was the night, that must be sunlight, I mean, sorry, moonlight or something, starlight. So when they were coming closer to the Israelites, there was a cloud. The cloud, not a natural cloud, it is a supernatural cloud. That cloud was giving a type of a pitch darkness to the Egyptians. Because of that, they could not go forward. They could not go nearer to the Israelites. So what is this darkness? At times, we are unable to proceed further. A terrible horror is a darkness. A terror is a darkness. Maybe what will happen to me, what will happen to the future, if this happened to me, if my wife kills me, my husband kills me, my daughter-in-law kills me, my mother-in-law does this for me, or my business, or my people around me, that horror is a darkness. And another darkness, we are unable to go forward. We are unable to reach our target. We are unable to proceed further. You don't know what you can do next. You are in your wit's end. It happened to the disciples. There was a great miracle. With five loaves of bread, two fishes, they were able to feed 5,000 people. So now they are on a journey. They are talking about the miracle. Peter was saying, see, I had only a few. Uh, he broke the bread and he gave to me the few crumbs. I was giving to one person, giving and giving. Still it was there. I moved to the second person. I was giving and giving. Still it was there. Then Thomas says, he says, it was so in my platter also. And John was saying, the fishes, I was sharing the fishes. Two fishes. The great miracle. They were talking about the great miracle. Suddenly the wind became contrary. And the sea became rough. They are very seasoned fishermen. The water body was troubled. They could not go forward. They could not go forward. Suddenly it happened. The wind that was favorable in the beginning has become all of a sudden contrary. They were also in darkness. They were in their wit's end. Their wisdom was sinking. Now with all his force, Pharaoh, he didn't know what he could do. He didn't know how he could go forward. There was a darkness. Are you facing that darkness in your life? Maybe in that marriage talk, you came very well. You thought that you are going to hit at the target. Now darkness. 
in that business contract. Everything went on very well. It's better in the cup and the sip. Just you have to sip it. Between the cup and the sip, there is a slip. You don't know how you can proceed. How can you go for the next step? Maybe it's in the ministry. Whatever the situation may be. At times we go to our wits and that's our wisdom is lost. We can't break our head. We are unable to take the next step. That's a darkness. It is a very new thought. The people are in darkness. May not be here you, maybe your friends, maybe your relatives, maybe your colleagues. They are in darkness. What is that darkness? They are in with the end. They don't know how to proceed. They don't know how to proceed that negotiation. How do, they don't know how to proceed the talk between the, uh, the uh, that family talk, maybe between the parents-in-law and the daughter-in-law, whatever it may be. They are unable to proceed. How to take the next step? How to solve this problem? Maybe a problem with their daughter. Maybe a problem with their son. Maybe a family dispute. Maybe sickness. How to proceed further? We have seen all the tests. We tried all the doctors within our capacity. We went here, we went there, we went everywhere. Now, uh, a blockade. What to do next? What to do next? How to face tomorrow? We are unable to go forward. I, I could feel in my spirit the Lord's message to somebody. Unless you know somebody. A dark situation. Let there be light. An our situation. Let there be light. When you feel that we cannot proceed further, let there be light. Number three, pestilence, infections, sickness. Psalm 91 verse 6, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. From where we get this infection, we don't know. How careful we could be. We try our level best to be careful. You can protect yourself from lion. You can protect yourself from tiger. Even you can protect yourself from mosquitoes. But protecting yourself from bacteria to some extent you can achieve. But protecting yourself from virus. At times I smile within me. There may be dust and all in your hand. So you go to a hotel before you could eat. For some people it is a custom. You go and wash your hands. But we may not know how clean that overhead tank is. How clean is overhead tank is? We wash our hands in that water. The dust may go, but the bacteria may come. Don't get scared. But this is the fact. We get a satisfaction. Okay, we washed our hands. And very coolly people take the handkerchief from their pocket to wipe their hands. With that they have wiped their sweat, they have wiped their face, with the same hanky, they wipe their hand, now they eat. Sad thing. But we all do it, no? You are standing in a bus stop, you are standing in a shop, somebody by your side sneezes. 
and you can't you can't make sure that you are always 10 feet away from uh, 10 feet away from everybody else in this world you have made all protections you are very careful but sometime by the side somebody standing hi what can you do by the time you get lot 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 so many uh, infection might have gone in we are living in this world polluted world so i don't say that you should not clean your hands or something but pestilence walks in darkness pestilence walks in darkness and last night when i was praying not only about this infection this common cold a cough a viral infection we, we may not immediately know the cause he may not immediately know the cause at times when you are traveling you may have to use a public uh, washroom that may cause an uti urinary tract infection how clean that was that must be clean superficially but what type of infection there we don't know the other person used it nearly for two hours that bacteria can be there and in a wet place it can grow also there are different things but more than that you talk with a person you just want to help somebody you may not predict what time what problem will come from what person we ha- happens no endha puthla endha paambu irukku nu theriyaliye abdi manga tamil i'm not talking about a viral infection but the problems from unexpected quarters we could never expect this will happen we can never expect somebody will accuse you like this we never expect this would happen to you from somewhere a word will come break your heart into pieces you'll have sleepless nights sleepless nights as an infection you cannot completely insulate yourself from all these things we're living in this world suddenly there can be a problem there can be a bad news so many things can upset us it walks in darkness when you see that person you may not know that he is going to hurt you you may not know that he is going to harm you you may not know he is going to sneeze close to you but there are problems all around us we are living in an uncertain world uncertain world the horror is difficult at least he got scared that if something happens to me my wife will take on me he got scared he expected maybe it's not it's not it's going to happen it may not happen but he expected but this i don't walk around expecting an infection will come an infection will come suddenly it will come suddenly it will come it will break your heart it will make you sick it will make you sleepless we cannot have an insulation around us all the time very careful very careful pestilence that walks in darkness pestilence that walks in darkness even in those situations let there be light let there be light certain things when trouble says by nature the other day i was telling one pastor by nature 
I don't allow that to trouble me, but I don't easily leave that aside also. I want to have a light. I want to know the truth behind it. I want to know the source of it. There's one verse in the Bible, God's right hand will find out your enemy. I may not my enemy, he is in the darkness. He is lurking in the darkness, he is like a parasite. I may see the mountain, I may see a person before me, but the secret enemy, the secret enemy who is lurking in darkness, I may not know. So I need light. Let there be light. Let there be light. My dear brother, my dear sister, pestilence that walks in darkness. I know the prayer of one of the saints. Always his prayer was this. Lord, I my dear brother, my dear sister, I heard that saint pray. I was wondering, always he's saying, Probably, when we go through that path, we know how much that prayer is very important. Your enemy is in darkness. He walks in darkness. He is not seen in the light. A mosquito can be seen. A lion tiger can be seen. But a pestilence, a virus, you cannot see. At times you cannot see your enemy. And he is very dangerous to your health. He is very dangerous to your health. That infection even can kill you. So one darkness is horror. One darkness is when we cannot proceed further. Another darkness, our enemy lurking, walking in darkness. Our enemy walking in darkness. And the fourth one, you hey, please stand with me to Psalm 104, verse 20. Psalm 104, verse 20. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein, in that darkness, all the beasts of the forest do, do creep forth. Is a time when all the evil forces work. And all the evil forces work in different forms. Different evil forces will work against us. And darkness is a time. When all the bees creep, all the evil forces, a reptile will come, a serpent will come, a tiger will come, a fox will come, all the evil forces will begin to work against us. A sickness, financial problem, family problem, problem in the church, problem in a worship place, problem in the ministry. There's a saying, uh, I don't know exactly to say that. Vitla Pisas added the Avrinu Koyaliku and the Ale Koyaliku Pana Angan Nurendi Dingi Dingan Adi Tincha. They were saying one doubt. Vitla now repression, Sami Gunda Palana, Sami Gunda Paratala by Angarmana Paracha. Yesterday I read one, I, I, one meme came. A big officer has sent that meme to me. One man was saying, Yo, I went to so many temple, temple after temple, temple after temple to worship different gods. 
but my problem is not solved. I was wondering why my problem is not solved. Then only understood ninety-three of those idols are counterfeit idols. Coil coil, ab is ami ko mo tayong prachan na tira bel. Yan da yam prachan na tira lang yos tu ba tapo da yam teriya manchite. Adalat tonur ka di man sami poy sami. We don't get a problem solved. All bees creep. All evil forces work against you. That's another darkness. That's a physical suffering. In Psalm 107, verse 10. Psalm 107, verse 10. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, as an iron piercing through, piercing through our soul, in affliction and iron, sitting in darkness, means in affliction and iron. Verse 14, Psalm 107, verse 14. He brought them out of darkness. What does it mean that he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder? That suffering is darkness. That affliction is darkness. Everywhere I am afflicted, Paul says. Everywhere I am afflicted. That's a darkness in our life. As I told you a few times earlier, it may not be in your life. You may be knowing somebody in your life. Pray for them. They are in darkness. They are afflicted on all sides. I just give you this verse. You can make a note of it. Matthew chapter 8, 12. Matthew chapter 22 verse 13. Matthew chapter 22 verse 13. This utter, outer darkness, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is lamentation. In that house, in that family, there's fighting against one another. <coughs> children, even children say, <coughs> gnashing of teeth. Gnashing of teeth. Weeping. Crying. Probably yesterday it happened in your house. I don't know. In the name of Jesus, I tell you. You are gnashing teeth one against the other. Weeping. That's the sign of darkness. You are in darkness. No peace. No love. No tranquility. No understanding. This morning, prophetically, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. You are in darkness. You are, you are unable to see what is right, what is wrong. Not only are you unable to see, you are bound. You are unable to come out of the wrong. That's the major problem. You are unable to come out of the bad habits. You want to love your children, but you are unable to love your children. You want to love your wife, you want to love your husband, you want to do uh, you want to be holy, but you are unable to be, you are bound, you are in darkness, you are in chains. You are in chains. You don't want that fight, you don't want to gnash your teeth. But you are unable to come out of it. You are unable to come out of it. All bees, yalla mirgam varad, yalla suttavi varad. That's the night. All evil spirits are let loose. Evil spirit of sickness, evil spirit of angry, evil spirit of fight, evil spirit of murder, evil spirit of uh, sex, evil spirit, whatever that evil spirit. Not one evil spirit. Evil spirit of sex, evil spirit of anger, evil spirit of murder, evil spirit of suicide, evil spirit of fight, evil spirit of lust, evil spirit of whatever that evil spirit may be, fear. All evil spirits let loose. That's the night. Cry unto the Lord, Lord, let there be light. Let there be light. Darkness of horror. 
Darkness where you cannot proceed further. Darkness of pestilence. Darkness of bound in affliction. Where weeping and gnashing of teeth. All evil spirits let loose. You may be a Christian. You may be attending a church. You may be an Israelite. But all evil spirits are let loose against you. You are not in light. You are walking in darkness. The fifth one. Very familiar one. Isaiah 42 verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them. And not forsake them. This darkness. Blind. Be not known. Earlier. In the Egypt's life. Way is not suddenly blocked. I don't know how to proceed. I am in my bit sin. I don't know how to proceed. Suddenly my progress stopped. Here I am totally blind. I don't know the way. Way not known. Is the fifth point. That's one darkness. Maybe it's slowly related one to another. There Pharaoh was not blind. He is unable to move forward. Here, I am blind. I don't know what to do. That way, I don't know. I am not familiar with that way. The way, I don't know. How to solve the problem, I don't know. The earlier case, I know to solve the problem, but I am unable to solve the problem. The solution is, I have to bring these Israelites back. I know that I have to bring them back. But now I am unable to go forward. I am unable to do anything. Now here in the fifth point, I don't know the solution itself. I don't know what to do. I am unable to make even a start. There their progress was hindered. Here I am unable to make a start. I don't know what to do for my daughter's marriage. What can I do? I am praying, praying, praying. I register here, I register there, I register everywhere. Now what more can I do? I don't know what can I do. I am in darkness. About this problem, what can I do? I don't know. I don't know the solution. Can you see the difference? One is I know the solution. I am unable to reach the solution. Here I don't know the solution itself. I told everybody to pray. I went here, I went there, I went there. I know everything. But I, I don't know what I can do. This is the situation I am in. I know some people, they are predicament. I don't know exactly what I can do. The, a few days back I was talking to one person, it's a wonderful word or phrase I learned. Only Uparwala knows. The one is that's a different thing. That's a situation of Pharaoh. Inala Mudila. I Mala Po Mudila. But this is, I don't know what I can do. 
That's a darkness. We'll cry unto the Lord. Let there be light. He that walketh in light will not stumble. If eyes has got light, his whole body will have light. I know what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do. This is why I'm going to do. Light. Here he doesn't know. But the promise is, the Lord will lead the blind, they know not. It's wonderful, the Lord will, I will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. My dear brother, my dear sister. Number six. Luke chapter 1 verse 79. Luke chapter 1 verse 79 To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Darkness is the shadow of death. Psalm 107 verse 10 we read earlier darkness and they sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Verse 14 he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. A shadow of death. The next step, death. What is after death, I don't know. That's a darkness. The shadow of death. Though I walk through in the valley of the shadow of death. A prisoner, he is in the shadow of death. A slave, he is in the shadow of death. We all are living in the shadow of death. Death is real. Death is real. What will happen after death? It is a shadow. There is no light. At least for the people of the world, you and I may be knowing. Death is a shadow. Shadow are the shade, shade of death that covers the light. They sit in the shadow of death. The very coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is to give light to them that sit in, sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Here in the shadow of death gloom, when there is no real peace. Peace with God. Peace with others. Peace within. No peace with God. Prayer is not peaceful. Always fighting with God. Why God this happened to me? Why did he forsake me? Why are you not giving me this? Why are you not answering? So in the prayer also there is no peace. No peace with husband. No peace with wife. No peace with children. No peace with relatives. No peace with neighbors. No peace in the business. My dear brother, my dear sister, they can find peace only in the bottle. One day one mother-in-law asked the daughter, daughter-in-law, where is your husband? 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 No, no, no. No peace with God. If he prays, fighting with God. If he looks at a person, fighting with that person. Then he fights within himself. He doesn't like him. He doesn't like his behavior. He doesn't like why he was born. I am parent there. He goes and fights with my I am pet there. So he, one who doesn't have peace with God, one who doesn't peace with others, one who doesn't peace within himself, how dark he is in. Just imagine what a life it is. He's in the shadow of death. He's in the shadow of death. Probably he lives because he does, he's scared to die. 
He wants to die because he is scared to live. Paradoxical. He is scared to die. That's why he is living. He is scared to live. That's why he wants to die. Sitting in the shadow of death. Prayer, no peace. Bible reading, no peace. Going to church, no peace. Meeting others, no peace. No friend, no relative, no peace. Maybe in sin, some relaxation. Going to a prostitute, going to a brothel, walking around a call girl, or drinking, smoking, drugs. An alternate is to find peace. But he knows that's not the real peace. And I know we are not going through that path, but people are in darkness. What is sitting in the shadow of death when there is no peace? He's sitting in the shadow of death. There's darkness. And the final, I say one thing. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that, that they should overtake you as a thief. To be very brief, to save time. Those are not ready to meet God. Either the day of death or the return of Christ. They don't know whether they can be raptured or not. Whether they will be ushered into heaven or not. When they finish their race, they don't know whether they go to hellfire or they go to heaven. Whether they will go to hellfire or they go to heaven. They are not ready to meet God. They are in darkness. In 1 John, in 1 John chapter 2 verse 9, chapter 2 verse 11, they that hate their brethren, they are in darkness. They walk in darkness. They don't know what their end would be. They are not ready to meet their end. They are not ready to meet their God. They are not ready for their future. They are not ready for their heavenward journey. They are in darkness. They are in darkness. My dear brother, my dear sister, very quickly, I tell you the main message. These are the situations in darkness. In John chapter 12, verse 46, Jesus said, I am come, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness whatever the darkness may be Jesus came into this world that if you believe in Jesus you should not abide in darkness Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Matthew chapter 4 verse 16. The people sat in darkness, saw great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Luke one seventy nine. I read again. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Jesus came to guide our feet in the way of peace. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1, 2 and 3. Arise, my dear brother. My dear sister, young boy, young girl, arise, shine, for thy light is come. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, look, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, your friends, your relatives, your classmates, your colleagues, your business partners, 
They are in the darkness. They are in the gross darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. 1 Peter 2, 9 But you are a chosen generation, my brother, my sister. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called you into this marvelous light. You are called out to show this light to others. To think about this to think to speak about the praises of one who has called you into this marvelous light. The greatest ministry. I just read this verse and conclude. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. I love that you could all note down this verse. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. The light was shining upon Paul. From darkness, the Lord called Paul into light from his religious darkness. The Lord called out Paul into light. He opened his eyes to why the purpose. Why did God open the eyes of Paul? Why did God bring Paul into the light? Why that light was shining around Paul? He says to open their eyes. To open the eyes of the people in darkness. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Take a solemn decision. Not only there can be light in your life. Take a decision. Lord, your light is shining in my life. The only purpose, Lord, to lead, turn them from darkness to light. Turn others from darkness to light. To turn my relatives, turn my friends, to turn my neighbors from darkness to to light. They are in the darkness of horror. They are in the darkness of uncertainty. They are in the darkness of uh, unable to proceed further. They are in the darkness of not knowing the way. They are in the darkness of secret enemies. To turn them from darkness, the darkness of sin, the darkness of affliction. To turn them from darkness, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan and to God. You are turning them from darkness to light. That is from the power of Satan and to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. They can come out of sins. And inheritance, they can have inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. And further he will be saying, not more than anything. It is not God wants you to sing, God doesn't want, it's not that God wants to play an instrument, it's not that God wants to preach, it's not that God wants to be, wants to prophesy. Only one thing God wants you to do, for that you prophesy or sing or you dance or you stand up, say down, there's not a matter. Only one thing God wants you to do. If the Lord has brought you into this glorious light, it is the responsibility of every candle. To turn them that are in darkness. To open their eyes. Help them to have forgiveness of sins. Help them come into the real light. They are crying. Tamasoma jodir gamaya. Tamasoma jodir gamaya. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from darkness to light. The other day I was talking to one of the boys. He said in his native place, in the church, uh, sorry, in the school. Every day they say this prayer. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jodi. Every day they are saying Tamasoma Jodir Gamaya, Tamasoma Jodir Gamaya. Lead us from darkness to light, deal us from darkness to light. What is the use of that prayer unless you can lead others from darkness to light? Take a challenge today. Take a challenge today. I'm not going to do anything. You need not be a preacher. You need not be a singer. You need not play an instrument. You need not be a great orator. The only one thing is Tavirana were onnu sayala Paul Solvar. Inna say sonare, lead people from darkness to light. Shall we all stand to our feet? Let there be light in your life. Let your candle be lighted. 
Let your family shine for the Lord. The whole, the darkness came upon the whole land. The darkness has come upon the whole family. The darkness has come upon the whole family. The father, the mother, the children, the parents, the brother, sister, the whole family is in darkness. The whole nation is in the darkness. You are in which end? You don't know how to proceed further. You know the solution, but you are unable to reach the solution. In the name of Jesus, his message has got two parts. Part number one, let there be light. Let there be light. In your darkness, let there be light. Part number two, the Lord has called you out of darkness to this marvelous light to show this light to others, those who are in darkness. The earth is in darkness. People are sitting in utter darkness. Your brother is in utter darkness. Your own sister is in utter darkness. They are in utter darkness. There is only weeping and gnashing of teeth in their family. They don't know how to proceed further. They are in the darkness of sin, in the affliction. They are not ready to meet God. Your friend is not ready to meet God. Your friend is not able to see the light. Probably every day they are saying the prayer, Tamasoma Jodhir Game, Lord, lead us from darkness to light. Unless you help, who is going to help them? Take it solution. Lord, I must lead people from darkness to light. Let there be light in my life. Lord, help me. Lead people from darkness to light. Take a decision. The Lord will give you the light. The Lord will lead you to light. The Lord will help you to light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The school where I was studying, in the cathedral high school, the school where I was studying, the motto of that school, it comes to my mind. The school where I studied from standard 5 to standard 11, the motto of that school, lighted to lighten. Lighted to lighten. Oli yetum badiyai, ni oli petir kerai. Ni oli yetum badiyai, oli petir kerai. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Just imagine, just imagine, just start from here. When Lydia is one candle burning, Hallelujah. Thabi is one candle burning. Pastor is one candle burning. Sisters here one candle burning. Boys here candles burning. We all are candles burning. Hallelujah. Everybody is a little candle burning. I am a candle burning. Simon is a candle burning. We all are candle burning. Our church will become the brightest light. Hallelujah. 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 Hundred candles, thousand candles, hallelujah. What a light that can shine in Wateri. What a light that can shine in Chennai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever the candles are lighter, there will be light. Hallelujah. When your whole family is lighter, when your whole church is lighter, when our whole nation is lighter, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our India will become Volirum India. Hallelujah. I'm going to light some candles. I'm going to light some candles. I am lighter to light another candle. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. Take a decision. Let there be light in your life. Let there be light in the lives of the people who are in darkness. Uri Shanadi Namara Badi Namara. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. With all fear and trembling, I challenge you. How many of you can say, I am light of the world? You may oh, you, what Jesus said, how can I say? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Now put your left hand on your chest. Slip your right hand towards heaven. With all fear and trembling, you use the word Jesus said. I am the light of the world. It's not a pride. This is your call. This is your mission. 
God sent Jesus into this world that was in utter darkness. When Jesus came into this world, he said, I am the light of the world. Tomorrow when you go back to your work, you are going to be the light of that world. You are going to be the light of the school. You are going to be the light of the office. You are going to be the light of the locality where you are living in. You are going to be the light for your relatives. You are going to be the light for your relatives. You are going to be the light in the nation. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise you. When Father sent you into this earth, he said, I am the light of the world. And you have told us that we are the light of the world. Lord, help us accept that call and say, I am the light of the world. Not with arrogance, Lord. With all humility. Help us say that, Lord. We are not only walking in light. We are the light. Help us this light shine. For us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let this light be seen upon us. Arise and shine, thy light is come. Arise and shine, the light is come. The world is in darkness. The people in utter darkness, the light of the Lord shall be seen upon you. I don't know how I could finish it. No more gnashing of teeth. No more weeping. Let the light be seen upon you. Let us pray.